one would argue is to look for uh, where who's the statue. The original statue in 1889, was it 1887, 89, uh, Queen Victoria's uh, Jubilee or something, or something along those lines, they put up the statue there. That was the original statue. And through, you know, using photogrammetry or things like that, we try to superimpose and look for it. Oh, the reason is not because the, the statue obviously moved and it's not in front of Victoria Concert Hall, but there was a time capsule buried there. So, I don't know, Raffles socks or something. <laughs> so, so we we're, were trying to look for it, uh, but uh, we, we were not lucky, we didn't find it. But, you know, we, we always lose time capsule, right? so, there are a lot of these things buried, nobody knows where they are. <coughs> By the bottom, we find all sorts of things. Uh, uh, the top left corner over here are uh, thematic period items, ancient Singapore items, porcelain, but we also stumbled across World War II, not too old stuff, 70 year old, World War II uh, materials, helmets, gas masks, uh, whiskey bottles, and all sorts of things. So you know, these are from gas, gas mask canisters and things like that. So they're all thrown in there. Uh, one thing great about having military equipment is the military have the obsession with with dating, stamping everything, the model, Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, and you can know all this is produced in 1939 to this September, <laughs> things like that. And we found out that these items were dumped there in February 1942. Now, of course, all of us know what happened in February 1942, right? February is a very favorite one, right? Mm -hmm. The founding of Singapore, and also the fall of Singapore to the Japanese. So I guess in disgust, these British guys from wherever we're going to chewing all these items and drinking up the gin and everything. <coughs> then what happens next? They march off to Changi. Isn't it? So there's still all these things buried there, so far very deep in the ground, 50 centimeters from in the Padang. You can, you can, don't believe me, take a shovel and go dig it up. But well, don't do that, at least you, at least they ask. They ask you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, there's actually a lot of things I want to, 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 to tell you guys in this talk I, about the natural history, the climate of Singapore, but after putting these slides together, I realized that we may have to be uh, a part two and a part three, maybe some other time. So I'll just briefly go through a few other of these things which she mentioned. Is really bad. <coughs> she talks about the fertility of the soil and what things can be grown there. And so, in the neighborhood of the town, there's a clear ground sufficient for, okay, again, the settlement and troops. So, it's quite obsessed with this thing. We must enjoy them. Uh, the soil and the water are excellent. How oh, okay, true is that? Let me see. Uh, according to John Crawford, the second resident, said, the soil, like that of all the neighborhoods, is all Generally is being unfit for growth of corn. Oh, well, it's corn, right? Corn can't grow in here. So, most of the great staples of, of tropical but he can't do it. He tried. Actually, he tried. Because remember, he was the next uh, uh, resident, the governor of Singapore. Not governor, but the person governing Singapore. The growth of coffee has been, has been attempted on a small scale, but without success. A few clove and nutmeg streak has been, but we safely predicted the soil is not suitable to grow. Instead, the only thing that's successful may be uh, things that are. Uh, uh, Oh, Gambier, and then he goes on, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't put this in. He goes on to talk about, uh, I didn't put it in, sorry, about how tropical fruits, bananas, coconut trees, and things are flourishing everywhere, you can find it. So these are the typical type of thing, pineapples. You know, because Singapore was, it became the pineapple capital, right? And even after the 1920s, there were all these pineapple kings of Singapore, right? Tin pineapples and stuff, coconuts and things. Coconuts were great because uh, coconuts, uh, not so much because people like to drink uh, coconut juice or eat the flesh, but for copra. Copra, of course, that's very important for making not just oil, TNT, explosive, dynamite. So it becomes a strategic asset for a lot of European powers, you know, buying up coconuts like no one's business. Like you would think, you know, what's wrong with these guys? But <laughs> and Singapore was producing coconuts. Now let's go back in time a little bit. I, I, I'm just showing this in. This is a, a, a medieval record. In 1349, there's this Chinese traveler called Wang Dayan. He's Dao Yi Ju Lian. He's like a, he's a Chinese lonely planet writer. So 99 places <laughs> visited in the, fourth, in the 13th century, or 14th century. So he's traveling around Southeast Asia to India and stuff. And he writes all these different places. And he mentions two places which may be Singapore. And I'll write it. In one place called only Yangon, they never come through. The fields are barren and there's little petty. So it seems like 600 years ago before Raffles came. The soil is poor and the grain is fast. They boil sea water or piss salt. But they ferment rice to make spirits. Uh, this is a map by uh, G. Uh, George uh, Coleman, Coleman of Coleman Street Fame, architect in Singapore. 
about 1836. I use this map instead of the Buttes map because I want to highlight a few things here. Sorry, you can't really see. Apologize for that. Chinese vegetable garden. So in 1836, Singapore is slightly more developed. They've been around for about close to 20 years. There's this Chinese vegetable gardens around this area, in the Mander, the Kalang area. So there's some sort of agricultural produce being done. There's patty. So some people are actually trying to grow patty, maybe for spirits, right? So there's <laughs> patty uh, up there. And what else do we have? We have uh, partly cleared land for sugar. Sugar and coffee plantations. So they're trying to do a sugar cane. And over here, they have gum beer. So they're still trying to do all these new things. But these are very uh, low-level type of plantations. Probably very household type of uh, garden plots and things like that. <coughs> ah, yeah, yeah, it's actually here. Sorry, I'm actually going to mix up my slides. So, but John Crawford says that it's remarkable the merry fruit trees cultivated by ancient inhabitants of ancient world of Singapore are still existing on the eastern side of the hill for Canning. Uh, after a supposed lapse of near 600, lapse of near 600 years. So he finds various fruits like durian, rabbitan, and uncu, and all these overgrown, so all these tropical fruits are still growing there. Uh, I, I didn't have time to put in those images, but uh, I will encourage you to go to the National Museum of Singapore, uh, the William Farquhar Natural History Exhibition, I think it's on a rotation basis, like 40, 50 of the 447, 400, there about 500 natural history prints that is in their collection by William, William Farquhar. Well, he did paint it, he actually get, he paid people to do it for himself and for him. And they are being displayed and they are rotated all the time so you can go there and have a look. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Right, so what else is there? Oh, you see, water is excellent. One of the reasons why uh, Raffles decided that Singapore is because of water. Water supply is very, very important. I mean, not just for, you know, for hygiene purposes or drink purposes, but because they want to sell water to plastic ships. It's one of the few things we can make money from, selling water to people. And one of the places of water will be this area. Right here. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, you can't see it. I just realized it's too tiny. It says freshwater river. Right there. And uh, those of you who remember this place, you know that that is Africa Canal. Right here. I think there's still, uh, you know where the chopsticks yeah. War memories, you know, war memories. Somewhere around that, that little uh, park that you just look for under a tree, there's a, a remnant of a low wall, yeah. and there's this huge brass plaque on it, yeah. and it says Stanford uh, Memorial to uh, this uh, Stanford Canal Bridge or something, and I can't remember what they call it, the Coat of Arms. So it's still there. It's underground right now. Uh, here's some pictures of how it looked like in the parks. Uh, at Dobie God, and of course, Dobie God uh, Canal. So there used to be laundry guys and behind the Dolby got uh, interchange. Right? So that's very fresh water you can go and try. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I, I am coming close to the end of my talk uh, for today. Uh, I'd like to leave you with this image, not leave you with this, I think it's one of the of, of Singapore. This was prior to the first two slides which I was uh, rediscovered by the researcher Mark, Marcus Langdon in the public records office in the UK of 7th February 1819, the first image of Singapore, and then April 1819, how it looked like a few months later. For the last uh, 60 years or so, this was always presumed to be the earliest sketch of Singapore by Lieutenant Philip Jackson. It was attributed to Lieutenant Philip Jackson and was dated to 5th June 1823. Uh, now, this is an important date. This is uh, four days before Raffles left Singapore for good, um, 9th June. And most likely, this is how he ended up in Raffles' the descendant's possession. Most likely, uh, Lieutenant Philip Jackson gave this drawing or whatever to Raffles before he left, most likely. Now, it was, this drawing was un only uncovered in 1951, so you can imagine the last 50 years things are starting to pop up, right? Things are for the viewed the view map only known to public only a few years ago in 2009. Uh, the, the sketches, the early sketches, the first sketch of Singapore in 2007. So I don't know what else is sitting out there in the UK. Uh, now I think the, the, the pound sterling is in our favor, so we should go and buy out the pounds and ethics. Who knows what's there, right? <coughs> so this is the image that uh, Raffles we have seen on his way back home to Vancouver first, then to, the, to Great Britain. Uh, this little path, there's Government Hill, or his little house on top. You have taken this uh, high street right down to the jetty. 
And we know from uh, Blue Lash Records of how people line up the street, soldiers line up, the roads, and sending them off, and waving. It's like a little pageant and all. And on board the ship over here, you will look back at how Singapore has grown, and how, you know, how proud it is to you know, look back at this couple of years. So that's how it looks like that. Oh yeah, there's a little point where there. Singapore stone is supposed to be standing around there, right? The tree is stupid there. So this is the little turn under Singapore and the Singapore River. So that's how you have a boat or a ham or a uh, This is the last slide I'll leave you in. This is one of my favorite books for Raffles, The Gentleman Thief. I don't know whether you've read this. A lot of movies about him. Oh, yes, I'm really doing. Okay, you should, you should read this. It's not this, it's like pop fiction. Not every day great, but it's, it's fun, right? So how this fellow goes around this whole series of it. So okay, you uh, please do uh, visit the exhibition again before it closes, and you can decide for yourself how our friend Raffles is like, and choose some of his letters, and probably have an insight of how, how, what you have seen in those early years in Singapore. So thank you for spending your afternoon with me. I apologize for, I just didn't realize that some of the maps are so tiny, and I do apologize for mumbling. And thank you for coming. Thanks.